Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Kerbal Realism with Dom. And today we are using all of the science right here, 493. Uh, we're using the science that we acquired from last mission, the Minmus mission, the manned one. Uh, we're actually planning on making basically probe missions now. So I need to buy things that would allow for that. First of all, I really do want uh, this one because just because of these stabilizers, these struts, and because all of these uh, these parts are really fun. Uh, all the robotics parts and stuff, the hinges and stuff. Um, get one of those. They're, it's relatively cheap. I also want to get this because of the solid rocket booster and this engine right here is basically going to make our day. Boop. There we go. Because uh, when we get up to here, it's basically big parts and I don't really care about big parts right now. Basically, we just got the best engine for the standard 1.25 meter parts. Okay, boop, boop, boop. So we're working on getting probes up. And my favorite type of probe, wow, there's a lot of good stuff in here. I added most of these mods continuously. Uh, uh, so I didn't see how much got unlocked the last time I tried all this out. Boop. Ooh, all of the aerospace stuff, all the airplane stuff. Oh yeah, so this is my normal probe. I love this probe. Uh, it's so nice to mount stuff too, so we're actually going to get it. But just basically unlocking this whole thing just for that, but it works for me. Um, and I think we're going to get this set, but I'm not sure just yet. i got to figure out what kind of antennas I already have. Boom, 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 boom. So I think... This unlocks the next antenna. This all lights. I'm not a big fan of lights. But what I should, what I do want is um, these big battery packs. These are really, really nice. Um, and these uh, these solar panels right here. I'm not going to need these basically ever because I'm going to have uh, those big fairings. So that extra weight is nice, nice to bring down. And I'm also going to need these uh, radiators. I'm not going to absolutely need them, but I'm going to want them. Nope. Uh, ooh, actually a thermometer would be nice. But what I want to do is get my communication satellites up today. So we are going to get uh, one of these. And I can't afford this yet, so I'm going to pick one of these lower ones here. I think we're going to get RCS. That's, that's definitely the goal for today. I would want to get this little RCS stuff, but we can just use these uh, round ones for now. Boom, and that's all I can afford. So, let's go ahead and make us a probe, a uh, communications probe. Um, and I'm going to show you guys how to get it into geosynchronous orbit. I'm going to build it off camera, and I'm going to show you it in the VAB, and we'll launch it after. See you then. Welcome back. Okay, I built this whole thing. Uh, this is our probe. It's sitting nice and neatly inside this fairing base. And I'm getting frame rate issues again, which happened last time I tried to record the segment, but I'm just going to go with it this time. Um, there's our probe it's sitting in there. It's sitting very nicely, if I do say so myself. It has one main antenna um, and two ones on the side, and that's, you'll see um, in the far future, why we have all of the amount uh, that we do. Um, but basically that's it. It has some RCS on it, has some batteries, and it has a radiator, which I'm not even sure if I really need, because um, I've never had anything overheat, so we're going to add those back on there, put those a little bit later in our launch cycle. And uh, the rest of the rocket, this is uh, all normal fuel here, These are, we just unlocked these actually, and these are solid rocket boosters, and I've limited to them just about 50%, and that works perfectly for our needs. Um, this gets us to almost exactly enough fuel to have a geostationary orbit so we're going to try it out uh, again i actually just tested it recently and it worked out very well boop, 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 boom. okay and it's being supported by these guys right there and we turn on our sas there and i'm just going to throttle up because i don't want to do it later and there we go so these solid rocket boosters will be able to bring us up to uh, well over uh, 20,000 meters um, and the main rocket there will fire afterwards 
and that will be able to bring us up to our apoapsis determined apoapsis height which i will explain to you now over in this area we are looking for geosynchronous orbit um, the best way to do that is to make your orbital period right here to equal six hours that's how fast kerbin rotates rotates every day on kerbin is only six hours um, so that's that's something you have to know. Another thing you want to know is you want to get your apoapsis and periapsis to the same number, um, and it's a very specific number that will allow your orbital period to be six hours. And I will show you that very, very soon. Let's go. Awesome. So we're just going to go ahead and just kind of blast up as most as almost as vertically as we can. Oh boy. I am just going to tilt it over just a little bit, though. Uh, just so we have a little bit of leeway time when we get to our apoapsis, so it'll be spread out more to get the right periaps. So uh, it's actually more fuel efficient uh, in this specific mission to go all the way to your apoapsis and uh, bring up your periapsis. So it's more or less a last minute kind of ordeal. Once we get enough out of the atmosphere, that's good enough. I'm going to blow off the fairing. There that goes. I know we probably lost a little bit of efficiency, but I don't really care. Uh, <laughs> and here is our probe exposed. I actually have to activate one of these. We're going to go to shoot it at mission control now, and I'm going to also activate all our solar panels, which I put on an action group. Sweet. So all our solar panels are now out, we're into the atmosphere, and I'm looking for an apoapsis height of about 2.8 million, 2.868 actually is what I'm looking for. So we're going to get that there, 2.45, 2.6, 2.7, almost, almost, 2.86, oop, 2.868, that's almost perfect. Um, we'll have to adjust it, you know, from either side eventually. But now we're just going to get ourselves up there. Uh, this antenna is going to allow us to communicate back to Kerbin. This satellite probably won't be directly above mission control, but it will have uh, enough range, uh, basically enough of an angle on it, so that we will be always be able to communicate with mission control through this satellite. So basically we'll be able to communicate with this satellite and then a mission control if we're on the other side of the planet. And that's kind of the point of doing these communication satellites. As you can tell, it's kind of rotated away from us. If I gave us more of an arc, we would have been more or less directly overhead. Um, but I'm not really worried about that too much right now. And there we are. Okay. So I'm going to go towards our prograde marker here and bring up our periapsis to about the same uh, that we're at now. And we have just barely enough fuel to do this. So um, I'm actually kind of concerned about how much fuel I'm using right now. Not entirely too worried about it. Because I do have RCS fuel, and that will be able to round us out if we have any rounding problems, like uh, out of round orbits. And we lost all of our fuel. When I tested this, I actually had enough, uh, so I apparently needed to go on an angle. Do, 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 do. Boom. Awesome. And let's go ahead and just use up our RCS now. And boop. We'll go ahead and hopefully be able to bring up our periapsis to a good height here. Oh, we already passed our apoapsis. Okay. I'm trying to bring it down now. Cool. Come on. Do we have enough? Oh yeah, we have plenty. Good, good, good. Let's get this up. And as you can tell, our orbital period is just about six hours. And I'm going to, oops. They kind of spun around. Let's go to Turn caps lock on so we are decent controls. 
Um, and then we're gonna get to our apoapsis and then we'll do a little bit of adjustment. But as you can tell, um, as of now, I can actually switch this to, instead of mission control, I can switch this to Kerbin and we will still have access. So now there's now a cone of influence here. So if there's anything within this range, it will be able to communicate with it. It's not pointing at one specific object. That's very useful. And uh, we're gonna get to our apoapsis, boop, 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 and round this out, and we'll actually see what the semi-major and semi-minor axis stuff is when we get there. It's better to do it from the actual apoapsis points and stuff. Oops, see, I overpassed it, but whatever, who cares? Um, let's take a look at it. Uh, nope. Oops. I uh, use this view uh, when I am very, very close to the number I'm looking for. Reasoning is because this doesn't get any more accurate than it is now. Um, and that's actually really close to the number I'm looking for. So 286876 is perfect for me. And when I get to the periaps, which I'm going to do very soon, um, I'm going to adjust the apoapsis. I don't know if we're going to be able to do it uh, because of where the sun is. Or I'm actually going to use the Kerbal alarm clock for this. Periapsis. Boop. And around we went. Cool, we have enough charge too. Sweet. Lead on close. Let's get to a periapsis here. And then we'll rotate. We can do it towards either direction here. Mm, come on, come on, get in place. Thank you. Awesome. Turn on our RCS and we will kind of adjust this the best we can. A little bit fidgety. Seven, nine. 7-9. That's good enough for me. That's plenty good enough for me. Your actual, your major axis should be 4-8, four, four, sorry, 4-6-8, four, I think. 3-4-6-8, I think, is the, the number I'm looking for, but... Um, let's see what we got here. Boop. Actually, this is a better orbit. There we are. That's even better. Okay, so it's not fidgety or anything. So, perfect. Uh, that's basically how you get uh, a geosynchronous orbit around Kerbin, and it allows you to set up a communications network. So, next episode, I'm either going to have both of the other ones out, and I'm going to put three in geo geosynchronous orbit here, uh, or what I'll end up doing is uh, probably montaging them at the beginning of the next episode, and then we'll do something else. So, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you next time.